Okay. Now, entropy is a property. Now, it's not a property that has a cyclic integral that's value is zero, because it changes zero, but it is still a property. And it's something that is fixed when I know enough about my system. So like for example, if I look at my nice little diagram over here, this is now a TS diagram. As a note, um, we had PV diagrams, we have TS diagrams. We're not gonna see like TV diagrams ever again. Those just aren't used at all that, that often. And this is just our phase change line right here. And we can see, we can imagine this is for water, for refrigerant, whatever it is. Now, before, what we realized is if we were compressed liquid or if we were superheated, I needed to know what the temperature and the pressure, and from that I could find enthalpy, internal energy, specific volume, all that stuff. Well, it's the same case for entropy. If I know my temperature and my pressure for a superheated vapor, I can find entropy. If I know my temperature and my pressure for compressed liquid, I just ignore the pressure and pretend like it's just a saturated liquid at that temperature. Also, if we were between these two lines, I can find my entropy by knowing the quality. So if I know my quality, I can find out what my entropy is by knowing the entropy of a saturated liquid, and I multiply the quality then by the entropy change from a saturated liquid to a saturated vapor. So from a saturated liquid to a saturated vapor. And so I get these little equations here, just things to help us out. So if you are in this region right here, you need to know the quality. If you are a compressed liquid, just ignore the pressure. If you are a superheated vapor, do not ignore the pressure. You have to use the tables. For all of these, you're gonna be using the tables and entropy is just another column in that same table. So don't worry about it too much. The last thing is capital S entropy is simply equal to my lowercase entropy that you see in the tables times the mass, okay? That is the big difference there. Now, one last thing I wanna to talk to you about right now, um, because I feel like it's very, very important, is to realize how entropy is changing as I go from a liquid to a vapor. What you should realize is that going from a liquid to a vapor, my entropy is increasing. And why is that? Well, it's because I have more randomness, more chaos, as I go from being a liquid to something that can bounce around in every single direction, which is a gas. The liquid, it's gonna stay there in this container. Yes, there is motion, it is swirling around the entire time. And if I went to just being an ice cube, you know, well, that has a lot less motion, even though those are still vibrating slightly. So as I go from ice to liquid to gas, I'm giving more and more energy to these molecules. When I give them energy, they have more and more motion. And as they have more motion, they have a better ability to um, be somewhere else, be somewhere different. They are random. They're gonna be anywhere they want to be. With ice, I can tell if it's cold enough exactly where those um, molecules are. Um, as I go to liquid, I can tell in general where the total amount of molecules are. When it gets to a gas, I have got no idea where they are anymore. And so the less knowledge I have, the more entropy the system has. One last little detail here is, remember our constant pressure lines? So they're still here. There's a constant pressure line. There's a second constant pressure line. I also have some constant um, specific volume lines. We're not gonna worry about those too much. But here's my question for you. How would entropy change? I went from a saturated vapor at 10 megapascals to a saturated vapor at one megapascal. So this is the same state you know, my quality is one. And what you see here is I go from one to the other, my entropy is increasing, okay? My entropy is increasing. So I can have the same quality, but different entropies at different pressures. So don't forget that. Don't um, let that confuse you. It's not a huge deal here. Just know that I can have a liquid vapor mixture that has the same entropy as a vapor mixture at different pressures. Okay, going on to isotropic processes after that, but I'll do that in a second video. So thanks for listening. I'll see you all in a minute. Bye-bye.